Hey folks, Greg here, and today we're going to be unboxing and reviewing something actually that looks really interesting. It's the Orion Gaming Display. Uh, and it's not just for Nintendo Switch, it also doubles as a monitor because it has HDMI in for other devices. So let's open this thing up and check it out. Hey folks, before we get started, be sure to hit that like, subscribe, notification button. It's three small clicks for you, but means the world to us. Let's get started. So this is the Orion Gaming Display. It's an 11.6 IPS monitor. The main thing about ISP monitors is that they're brighter. Like they're supposedly brighter and the, their brightness and the way the pixels shift horizontally just makes it easier to, to, to move and uh, look at it while it's moving. So you guys can look it up yourself, decide whether or not you like ISP or not. Uh, I know LED and OLED are like the big buzz things right now, but this is, this is an 11.6 ISP anti-glare monitor. So on the back of this, you'll see it has improved an audio experience. It has two speakers. I believe they're two watt speakers. It has comfort grips, which is great because I actually have those on my Switch right now. It's to the side. It has an audio out for headphone jack, a built-in kickstand. It actually, the switch actually goes inside of it. <laughs> it actually goes inside of the, the monitor. It has uh, controller mount mounts that you put on the device itself. It also features an HDMI in, uh, so you can use it as a monitor for your PlayStation, PC, DVD player, whatever has an HDMI output, you can use this with. Uh, it's also USB powered. Now this is the one thing that I'm really concerned about. Uh, if this isn't powered by the switch at minimum, then this is gonna be a tough review. So it's powered by USB. Now that just, that could mean that that's how you charge it. Uh, I don't know, we'll find out when we open it. Kinda, I did a little bit of research on this, but not a ton. So here we have the instruction manual, which I will look at and put it together. Okay, the, it's, it's good to know that the Joy-Cons charge on it, which is kind of cool. We have a, let's see, we have like a case. Ooh, it's a very nice case. There we go. So, silica gel to the side over here. And here are where the Joy Pads are, or the, the comfort grips, excuse me. If you have big hands like me, very useful. Looks like it has a carrying case, just like a little soft little bag, has some stuff in it. Okay, cool. Has a, looks like some other little accessories and some screws for the comfort grips, because I know this is what for. So we'll put those to the side for now. And let's see what this thing looks like. Okay, first off, it feels relatively heavy. Uh, very heavy, actually. A lot heavier than I would like a monitor to feel. And in the back, it has all this stuff going on. Like I said, it has the, has the speakers on the outside. It has the HDMI out here, USB-C input here, and these things which are for the power bank which is making me think that this cannot work without being plugged in, which would be very, which is very unfortunate if that is the case. So you have a lock switch down here, pull it up and you open this thing out. And this is where the switch goes. And make sure it gives you a little warning how to do that. So let's actually, let's pull this out. Oh, this is to get the switch out easier. So like you do it like that, so you can pull it out. That's what this is for. Okay, so I'm gonna put my switch in here. So I have very, very, very big hands. Uh, so I always like the comfort grips on my Switch. I have this one here. This is made by Satisfy, right? Satisfy makes these. I got these recommended to me by a friend. So Jason, so that was really cool. I like I like these a lot. Uh, I'm gonna remove it. And all this is, is just one solid piece. So just one solid piece of plastic. And it comes with its own carrying case, which is actually convenient. So here's the Switch itself, right? This is just the Switch and you're supposed to remove the Joy-Cons. Switch goes in like that, right? Right in, close this, locks down, and that's it. Then the Joy-Cons go on the side, like so. Okay, this thing is already, just with the, this thing is not, it's very heavy. Very, very, very heavy. A lot heavier than I'd like it to be. But I wanna put the comfort grips on here. So let me remove these Joy-Cons and put the comfort grips, which you put on the back right here. So these kind of, they go in and they push in on these two things here. It'd be hard to see with the, the glare. So these just go into these two holes here and they just slide in and then you reinforce it with a screw. So now that I have a flathead screwdriver, I'm gonna tighten the screws here on the right and left side of it. It has some rubber mounts on the bottom so you can have it kind of upright a little bit. And then it has a kickstand, which is much more beefier 
stance, you can set it upright like that and play it with a other third party controller if you want or wireless pro controller or wireless joy cons and then it has of course two speakers here the switch is in there so let's go ahead and turn this on and see if it's powered by the switch okay it is not self-powered that is a huge missed opportunity so I'm going to get a USB-C plug and plug this in full fast and turn it on that way. So fun fact, this is actually a tool that you use to screw them in. So you don't need a screwdriver. You can use this. I thought it was a keychain you used to put your name on it or whatever. You can use this instead, which is kind of interesting. <laughs> All right, so I have a USB plugged in here. Unfortunately, the closest plug is to my right. So uh, that's <laughs> really odd. They didn't put it in the center or have two on each side or because like if Obviously you're not, you don't have an outlet to your left, you're kind of screwed. So let's turn this thing on. Oh, it just takes a really long way. I thought something was wrong. It just takes a really long long to uh, turn on. So I'm gonna take this clear thing off. And I will, I will admit it, it, it looks good. Like the anti-glare looks good. Uh, I do, I do like anti-glare. Uh, it does look, a, it looks pretty vibrant for the screen size as well. I like seeing how big the switch is. Uh, again though, it, it's really heavy and this is without a battery pack. And they want you to put a battery pack on the back of it and strap it in, which adds even more weight. And I already think the Steam Deck is pretty uncomfortable and that's not even two pounds. Yeah, it's barely two pounds and this thing is going to be war. And I'll weigh it before the end of the show uh, with just uh, just as is without the battery pack. So we have a lot of different games here. I'm downloading some that I bought online, but let's like, how does it handle? Let's look at, you know, something simple like Mario's 3D Odyssey. There we go. The speakers already sound tremendously loud. I mean, it feels, it feels very comfortable. Like I, my hands, the, my hands don't feel cramped. Although it's very heavy. I keep saying that like, I'm, like if I was on an airplane that had to hold this in front of me, I didn't have some place to kind of rest it because I'm kind of resting on the table right now as I'm playing. And I'm going to go for broke. I didn't see it as a feature, but I don't think this has touchscreen capabilities. Okay, it does not. So if you have a game that uses that, which not many do to be fair, it doesn't have touchscreen capabilities. I mean, it feel, it's nice to have this big screen. I'm not gonna lie, it feels really nice. But yeah, there's no touchscreen capability at all. But then again, neither is it when it's on your television. So I guess I can't fault it too much for that. I mean, it, lo it looks gorgeous. Like, I'm not gonna lie. I really do like these, especially the Nintendo games. They look so good. And on a almost, it's almost a 12 inch screen. Now this is not OLED either. So it's just an ISP screen. But now how do the retro games look on it? Let's try uh, Mega Man. So you can kind of see here, it's not really full screen. It's still larger than the Nintendo Switch uh, version. And you can hear the speakers on it really well. Like they're, they're really good speakers. Good anti-glare too. Like my lights are on this and you can't really see it. Can't really see the lights, which is kind of cool. But it's, it's pretty good uh, in terms of like, it, it, visually it's good. But here's the big thing, right? Like, does it work without power? And now that everything's plugged in, if I unplug this, will it just die? Yep, it just dies. Oh, oof. I, I, I like 
Yep, the Nintendo Switch is not the Nintendo Switch is not powerful enough to to run it to have. So yeah, it does not run under its own power. Eesh. That's a big deal break, breaker uh, for me. I, I play my Switch primarily in handheld mode everywhere. I, I could definitely see this. It's still booting up. It takes such a long time to boot up. And then it says no signal. Turn it on and back on again, maybe it'll. So I like, I like the concept of this a lot. I think it's a very interesting idea to have an LED screen with an HDMI and no less you can play. However, because there are no batteries built inside of this, they ask you to, they even have like straps on the back, see the straps, to, to put a power supply source. Now, I have a ton here. I have like a super big one that I use when I go on trips on assignment, and I have some other smaller ones. I'll, I'll attach some there, but you know what I wanna get right now? I wanna get an accurate weight for you guys out there. So I'm gonna go get a scale and place this on the scale and see how much this weighs without the battery pack. Okay, so I'm gonna get a weight on this thing uh, with just the, now it is plugged in, but I wanna get a kind of an accurate weight. Oof. Okay, so I know it might be hard to see, this weighs two pounds and 4.9 ounces without a battery pack attached. So I have a few on the side, that, that's, that's way too strong. I mean, the Steam Deck is a little under two pounds and I feel that's, that's too heavy for a device and this is heavier than that. And it doesn't have its own battery power. Uh, what does it weigh with a battery pack attached? Let's 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 check it out. So this is five volt, two point amps max. This is a 800 milliamp charger. So I'm going to put this on the scale because that's just going to add to the weight. So I'm gonna turn this around. See, it has like soft rubber there. I use the built-in handler for this because I think this is about the right size that they want. And then with a the battery pack on, an 8,000 8, milliamp battery, it goes to two pounds, 11.5 ounces. Ouch. Now, how does it feel with the battery pack on is the question. Heavy, very, very, very back heavy. <laughs> I mean, like I would cheat this and maybe put it on the, the table when you're, wow, that's heavy like this, and then maybe like if you add some of that, but like if you're on an airplane, I guess that could work. The fact that there's no, they couldn't fit any batteries like on the outside of the frame or anything, it just feels like a huge miss, uh, an absolutely huge miss, especially considering the price of this of this monitor. The monitor is $300. Now you hear me right, it's $299.99 is what the asking, uh, is what the manufacturer retail price is for this device. And while I think this certainly has like neat situa uh, niche situations, for people who maybe only have one TV or have a shared family room space or, or something and you want a bigger uh, a bigger screen and you don't mind plugging it in, that's not a huge deal breaker. For me it is, I play my, my, my Switch 98% in handheld mode. It's never plugged in unless it needs to charge. It's, it's a huge miss for me that there, there's no batteries built into the screen, especially at a $300 price point. Uh, they spend so much money on making the screen look nice. I think other aspects may have suffered. It's really hard to recommend this product uh, based on how expensive it is. And like, again, I'm still stuck on that. I can't believe they couldn't fit any kind of batteries inside the screen to at least give it a little bit of, 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 of life. It needs to be plugged in at all times in order to be worked, whether that's into a, an outlet or into a battery pack or whatever, it, it, the switch will not power it. That's, I, I, I'm sorry, I'm still a little taken aback. That's insane. Like that, what a weird design whiff. Like you'd think people like the switch because it's mobile and you're giving them a bigger screen. And if I'm at home, I'll play on my big TV instead of handheld. I play this stuff like when I'm in bed, uh, when I'm on the couch and I guess I could plug it in there, but like traveling, it's, it's heavy. It's, it's almost three pounds with a battery pack. And that's, that's it. That's just too much on an airplane. Like my hands are going to get tired. I get tired now holding it just the regular switch on the airplane for extended period of amounts of time. Cause there's no place to set it down. Cause you know, they cram you in like sardines on those airplanes. Yeah. It's man. That's, that's re it's really hard to recommend this at this price point. So many faults in, in terms of just the power. Like I can appreciate the HDMI, the rubber mats. I can appreciate that they tried their best to make the bottom be as flush as possible with the switch. I like how the switch has, the switch has ventilation in the top. I don't know if you can see it there, but there's a little ventilation there for the switch so it can breathe as well as down there a little bit. But there's also another big flaw that I don't think many people have really noticed is that like, if there's no way to insert a game card without taking the entire thing apart. So if you wanna switch games, you have to turn it around, 
unplug it, unremove the battery, get into the uh, get into the innards, take out the switch, insert your game card, and then you can play. I'm a pretty heavy digital only advocate. I do have a few games that are physical, but that's kind of a big deal. <laughs> like if you want to switch games, that you have to take the entire thing apart to get to it, that there's no slot in the top. You don't see any slot in the top to access the game. You have to uh, undo the entire thing. A really cool concept idea. I don't think fully realized uh, a lot of stuff missing that wasn't thought about. Biggest thing being power supply, second biggest thing being weight, and third being no accessible switch cartridge without taking the entire thing apart. This thing is stupid heavy, but with the 8,000 milliamp charger I have, which isn't a huge charger, it's a small, see it's a small little golden thing. It's not huge. It's two pounds, 11.5 ounces, which is way too heavy, like way too heavy. Yeah, I mean, I wish I could say more nice things about it. I do, like I said, I do like the screen, but like having to have it plugged in sucks. Having to have a battery supply be attached to it sucks. Having it almost be three pounds sucks. Like this is heavy, folks. This is very heavy. So, I mean, you can check it out. I'll leave a link in the description below. Uh, the price is astronomically high. It's as much, a it's, it costs as much as a Switch. So, not an OLED version. I think it just costs as much as a retail regular Switch. And it's $50 more than a Switch Lite, but we all know that has limitations as well. I think if you're really in a spot where you don't have a TV or you have a shared space, or you're, re you're one of those people who really don't mind, who really doesn't mind that it has to be plugged in for it to work, you might want this. This may be the gift for you, but I feel like that market is so small. And, and that's about it. Uh, Orion, I wish I could say better things. Uh, it's it's too heavy. The, the lack of power supply is, is pretty bad uh, that it has to be plugged in all the time and that you need to have a power bank to work with it. It doesn't even come with a power bank at, at that price. For $2.99, you only get the, uh, the screen and the controller outputs and the, the comfort grips. It doesn't come with the power bank. So you have to have a power bank on your own and uh, yeah, this is one of the smallest ones I own. So yeah, and it's heavy. Very, very, very heavy. I do like that it has an HDMI in. It can, you can use it as a little screen for something. Uh, maybe if, if you're traveling with your Xbox and your hotel doesn't have a TV, I don't know why your, ho your hotel wouldn't have a TV, but for stuff like that, it might be, it might be good. Uh, there's no touch screen capability. So any games that have a touch screen aspect to them, you won't be able to play on this. Again, that's few and far between, there's not a lot. But yeah, that was the Orion gaming display. <laughs> I, I, like I said, I wish I could say better things about it. Thanks for watching, you guys. If you enjoyed this review, be sure to hit that like, subscribe, notification button. It's three small clicks for you. It means the world to us. For more unboxing and reviews, you're already in the right place. You're on shacknews.com.